Hello, my name is Dr. J. Michael Bennett with the Fondren Orthopedic Group. I am a sports medicine specialist who focuses primarily on dealing with pathologies of the shoulder, elbow, and knee. I am fellowship trained and CAQ certified in sports medicine as well as general orthopedic surgery. One of the topics today uh, that we're going to talk about is shoulder instability or shoulder dislocations. Uh, there, there's a number of different types of injuries to the shoulder that one can sustain and these are usually seen as acute injuries of the shoulder, typically falling on an outstretched extremity or falling on an adducted shoulder like this can cause a number of different injuries to the shoulder and it's a misconception to categorize them all as dislocations or separations. Uh, there are actually two separate joints that actually can be involved. If you look at your standard shoulder model, this is your shoulder. The shoulder consists of a ball and socket mechanism. This is the ball, the humeral head. The socket is actually the glenoid, which is a cup. So when you, in simple terms, when you think about the ball and socket mechanism, you need to think about the humeral head really sitting in this cup, almost like a golf ball sits on a golf tee and that actually creates a sense of balance. That way you can balance the ball on the golf tee. Now occasionally, if you have an injury, and we see this a lot in our football players, uh, where the arm is abducted or out to the side and externally rotated, and it's hit from behind, or they fall on their arm in this position, the arm rotates and this ball slides out of the socket. That is a classic dislocation. Here's another model here, a bony model showing, once again, the ball and the socket of the shoulder joint. This is the humeral head, this is the glenoid, and this is your scapula. So when you, you abduct the arm and externally rotate, this ball can actually slide out of the socket, especially if it's an extreme force coming out from posterior or they land on that shoulder. When it does dislocate, occasionally it can get stuck and actually get hinged up on this glenoid rim here and actually needs to be forcefully positioned back into joint. Okay, and This is usually done, recommended to be done by an orthopedic specialist or somebody that's familiar with reducing shoulder dislocations. Occasionally, when you have a dislocation, you can have a tear of this little rim in the front of the shoulder. The socket area here, also known as the, gl uh, the glenoid, is surrounded by a bumper that's called the labrum. And this is a soft tissue bumper that surrounds this glenoid area that helps stabilize the shoulder as well. When you have a dislocation, that little rim gets torn off and then it allows the shoulder or the humeral head to pop out in front of the glenoid. Sometimes you can even get a piece of bone attached to that little bumper and then you have a dislocation, and, and that's called a bank art injury when there's a little fleck of bone and a, lot, and a labral tear. When that occurs, most often than not, uh, it needs to be reduced back into the joint. Sometimes the shoulders will actually reduce on their own, and sometimes these can be chronic, and some patients will have recurrent dislocations where they, whenever they put their arm in a, this position, it actually leads to a dislocation. So this can happen when they're sleeping at night, it can happen when they go swimming, it can happen at any time. And the more times it dislocates, the looser that shoulder gets, so it recurrently occurs. Um, occasionally, if you have a large enough piece of bone that's missing down from this glenoid here, this shoulder will pop out at very minimal uh, amount of exertion, will allow it to slide out a joint. So in that, if that's the case, Sometimes we have to, well that will actually determine what type of surgical technique to actually fix the shoulder. Typically if, it, if you're a young athletic patient who wants to get back to full activities, if you have a dislocation, I typically recommend you have it fixed or at least evaluated by an orthopedic surgeon to determine the severity of the dislocation. In addition to this labral tear or bank art lesion that you can have in the glenoid, you can also get an indention in the humeral head because when the shoulder pops out a joint and rides on that little rim of glenoid there, it actually creates an indention in the back of this head here. So you can end up having two types of injuries within the ball and socket mechanism. 
you have a tear in the labrum, detached bone in the front of the uh, glenoid, and an indention in the humeral head. This is called a hill sax lesion. So depending on what, is, what, what you have will determine how easy that shoulder can be popped back into place. Many times we can pop these shoulders back into place while on the field if it's an acute dislocation. But occasionally when it gets stuck and you have an indention in the humeral head, it's not as easy and you have to go to the emergency room or to a hospital to receive what we call conscious sedation that relaxes the muscles that surround the shoulder joint and allows us to pop back into place. Because what happens when you pop out a joint, all these muscles surrounding the shoulder are going to spasm and keep it out of socket. So it's important to have full relaxation to pop the shoulder back into place. As far as treatment options regarding the shoulder and the dislocation, if you're a young patient, usually less than 40 years of age, and you sustain a dislocation, more often than not, you have damage to the glenoid here, the labrum, or the bony rim of this glenoid region, uh, as well as a hill sax lesion. And that will lead to recurrent instability. If you're greater than 40 years of age, more than likely you will have injury to the rotator cuff tendon. These tendons tend to, over time, they get a little bit more degenerative and easier to tear. So the older we get, the little bit weaker these tendons are. So if you have a dislocation, the stress of that dislocation can tear the tendons and detach the tendons from their tuberosity insertion here. So it's important when you do see an orthopedic surgeon that they do the full workup, including x-rays, basic x-rays, as well as an MRI. Typically, I'd recommend an MRI arthrogram where they actually place a little bit of dye within the shoulder joint to actually mark out any detachment of the labrum in the joint. It usually shows up better if you have the dye in the shoulder joint. Sometimes if you've had an acute dislocation, you can have bleeding in the joint, which actually can work like dye, and you can actually see the dis differentiation where the labrum is torn, and you don't, may not have to have the, uh, the arthrogram, but most of the time we usually recommend an arthrogram. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to visit my website, www.jmichaelbennett.com or feel free to call my office at 281-633-8600.